episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Son to Do, the Christmas episode, even though we're not doing a Christmas movie. We did a Christmas <laughs> no. movie last week, I yeah. guess. Yeah. But uh, we're going to be giving ourselves gifts. We're going to be doing all the good stuff. Uh, today, we are reviewing two of the most popular movies uh, out there. At mm, the we'll movie talk about how popular first. they actually are, though. Like they're probably they're with popular. us. Both, both of them are doing really good, really. Mm, right now, actually, no, no. I look at the box office. Well, fine, fine. If you say they're, so, they're doing good. The first <laughs> one is a Del Toro. I guess classic at this point. Yeah, I guess I mean, so. Anytime yeah. he does a movie, it's going to be automatic classic. Yeah, automatic. Right. You know, uh, even though Ron Perlman wants to beat him up. Um, Ron Perlman wants to beat everyone up. He, to be fair. <laughs> He's got a he's got a beef with Del Toro. He's like, why didn't he invite me to be in Pan's Labyrinth or Shape of Water? Well, well so he, he he's been Hellboy, Oscar winning movie. Well, he was I know, Hellboy. but he wanted to be in an Oscar winning movie. <laughs> you know? Well, who says he won't be and, in one now? Who says he won't be in one now? No, who knows? Who knows? So the movie is Nightmare Alley, featuring the always good, the beautiful man himself, Mr. Bradley Cooper. I mean, the world's hard enough as it is, guys. It's fucking hard enough as it is. Can't somebody say, hey, let's be positive? Let's have a good ending to the story? Pat, you owe us an apology. Mom, I, for, I can't apologize. I'm not going to apologize for this. You know what I will do? I will apologize on behalf of Ernest Hemingway. That's from Silver Lane's playbook, um, and he's actually really good in that movie. And so I, I remember seeing the movie after one day I had jury duty. I got, like, go from it, they're like, you know, let's go. And I was like, well, fuck, I had the rest of the day off. I'm going to see Silver Lion's playbook by myself. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's a good movie. Yeah, it's good. I, I love that movie. Uh, Kate Blanchett is in this movie as well. I mean, what do you care? I mean, if I care or, or don't care, what's it to you? All right. What if I said I never cared about, you know, folk music, about, uh, you know, protest songs? It was all about jumping into a scene. <laughs> you know, I, I was never going to stay there. I mean, I just... You know, knew I could do it better than anybody else. Well, I don't believe you. Yeah. No, so... I mean, you know what matters to me, you know, matters what's happening now. That's from I'm not there. He, she's playing a version of Bob Dylan. He's not, her character is not called Bob Dylan, but this movie is all about the different mythology surrounding Dylan. You know, he says he's done all kinds of shit and he's bullshitting everyone. But but uh, I, I love did that, that movie. just for you, buddy. Thank I you, did Tom. that one just for you. Thanks, pal. I was going to go all Marvel movies because each yeah, one of these people I was to say, I was to say, are in a Marvel movie. I was going to say, like, we're I doing do, Spider-Man No Way Home as the second movie. Yeah, she, uh, you know, I was going to get on to you about um, freaking all Marvel clips. And I was like, no, fuck that. Because cause if there's any episode in the past year where you need our Marvel, Marvel clips, it's this one. <laughs> you yeah. know? And I and I didn't do that. I was going to because mm -hmm. she was obviously Hera in Thor, mm -hmm. uh, Ragnarok. Yeah. And Bradley Cooper plays the wonderful uh, Rocket Raccoon mm -hmm. in Guardians of the Galaxy. And our next guy, I did use a Marvel clip <laughs> just because later on we're going to talk about him as well, Mister William Defoe. You killed them. We killed them. We remember. A little accident in the laboratory. The performance enhancers. Bingo. Me. Your greatest creation. <laughs> and Willem Dafoe still looks the fucking same. <laughs> As he did in the... Oh, I mean, it looks amazing. And, and we'll talk about, uh, during the spoiler section, we got to talk about the only way he would come back and okay. do the goblin. Okay. Um... And then Rooney, uh, Rooney, uh, Mara. Mara. Yeah. You are probably going to be a very successful computer person. But you're going to go through life thinking that girls don't like you because you're a nerd. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that that won't be true. It'll be because you're an asshole. <laughs> yeah, from a uh, from social, social network. network. Yes. And also in this movie, Tony Collette, Richard Jenkins, Ron Perlman, David Streatham, uh, uh, Peter McNeil, uh, Halt Mc... I mean, there are so many people in this movie. Yeah. It is Del Toro's Nightmare Alley. That will be the first movie that we talk about. Mm -hmm. Then the second movie, the big sexy movie, so big, it is now the second highest grossing movie of all time within the first week. 
Well, I mean, that makes sense to me. Like, it's, it's, it literally, that was just released like 20 minutes ago. And this was, this started. is pandemic. So it's even un- yeah, more, pres- even more pro- unprecedented, you know? So, like, uh, and that's going to be the great Spider Man No Way Home featuring, of course, Peter Parker himself, Tom Holland. What the? I know what you're going to say. You should not be here. I was going to go home. I don't want to hear but it. But it was such a long way down, and I just thought about shooting. And now I got to hear it. kind of stuck to the side of the ship, and this suit is ridiculously intuitive by the way so if anything it's kind of your fault that i'm here what did you just say i take that back and and now i'm here in space yeah right where i didn't want you to be this isn't coney island it's some field trip this is a one-way ticket you hear me don't pretend you thought this through. i know you did i did think this through possibly thought you can't be a friendly neighborhood spider-man if there's no neighborhood damn (laughs) from uh avengers endgame Mm-hmm. Yes, of course, I had to use that bit. Yeah, you got and to. then, of course, the wonderful Zendaya. MJ, I... I'm Spider-Man. What? That's what you were going to say, that you're Spider-Man. No. <laughs> I'm not Spider-Man. I mean, I've been watching you for, like, a while now. It's kind of obvious. <laughs> I'm not Spider-Man. I mean, what would make you think that I was Spider-Man? Peter Washington? Yeah. The fact that you, like, disappear out of nowhere for no reason? No, that was, I was sick. Remember, I had my, the tummy? You know Susan Yang thinks that you're a male escort. What? No, of course I'm not a male escort. Well, then you're Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, that's a good scene. Of course I'm not a male escort. From, uh, Spider-Man. Homecoming, right? I mean, that's, the, there's only two. It's either your male escort or your no, Spider-Man. Well, that's the, what, this is, what, 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 man, what's the last one called? There's no Way Home. And then Far From a, Home. Far From Home, yeah. Far From Home. Yeah, yep. And then Jacob Battalion? Battalion, I think. Yeah, I know. Hey, can I be your guy in the chair? What? Do you know how there's a guy with a headset telling the other guy where to go? Like, like if you're stuck in a burning building, I could tell you where to go because there'd be screens around me and I could you know, swivel around them because I could be your guy in the chair. You know, I was a guy in a chair in a, uh, in a play that we wrote in class. I was a guy in a chair. Really? Yeah, yeah. Spider-Man? Not Spider-Man, no. Like, it was some other, like, thing with you know, some sort of spy, like, you know, five minute screenplay. And I was a guy in chair telling him, you know, go to the left, go to the right. I was the guy with the screens around. There me. is, there is a show I used to watch as a kid and it had, it had a guy on a motorcycle. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it, there's a guy in the chair <laughs> and uh, my, my mom just toted in. Love your shirt. <laughs> yeah. Ready, ready, pepper. Christmas shirt. Oh yeah. Anyway, we, we have one more um, person that says in this movie. though. Oh yeah, definitely. The wonderful, the beautiful, Always amazing, Benedict Cumberpatch. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. What is happening? Just as you gave Kaecilius powers from your dimension, I brought a little power from mine. This is time. Endless, looped time. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, also Jamie Foxx, John Farrow, William Defoe, Alfredo, uh, Alfred uh, Molino, uh, Benedict Wong. I mean, Marisa Tremé. I mean, li- the list goes on. It's Spider-Man No Way Home. We're going to talk about that second. Mm-hmm. Um, and, man, am I going to – spoiler section, beware. Yeah. Because the, yeah. there's going to be a great time. We're just going to enter it. We're going to give a great review. We're going to be like, hey, this is what the movie's like, and this is what we like about it. And I, uh, then we're I just see a spoiler section. But I've seen so many, like, gonna, like Facebook articles that spoil it, though, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Like, like yeah, not everyone's yeah. seen the movie yet. I mean – I think mean, everyone has. I I went to the packed theater on, All right. on Sunday afternoon. So morning. I have I have two pages mm-hmm. of quotes for that movie, right? Mm-hmm. I have one, two, three, four, five, six pages of Easter eggs or things I caught in uh, about Spider Man No Way Home that in the spoiler section we will talk about, but we will not talk about that until the spoiler. So, section. did we want to open so, gifts during the new segment or we're going to do it now? Let's do it now. Okay. So, I mean, we got nothing really to talk about. No, what you do all week? You know, I just, I just work, man. <laughs> that's just, that's yeah, all I did. And you got a TV from your yeah, wife? I, I, yeah, awesome. I got a 65 inch TCL smart TV. It's amazing, dude. Uh, I 
Man, I, I'm dying to go up there and just watch basking it right now, but uh, I got to do the podcast. Yeah, bask in the glory of your big ass TV. Uh, I know, it's amazing. Dude. You, know. you remember, remember right? when you were a kid and you saw somebody that had one of those big ass like, projector televisions? televisions? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd think this is the richest family you possibly <laughs> yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, you're like, they're millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> they got me. Uh, but they must this, be millionaires. Why do they got this huge TV? I know, but TV's bigger than that now and it looks way better because the projector TVs look like shit. All right, I'm getting this All right, Chris, you go first. Open up the gift that I was lovely enough to send you, I sent you a month too. ago. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Get this open. Okay. Fuck. Come you can on. do it, Chris. Use your, use your muscles. Use your muscles. You got muscles. I have muscles. They're hidden, though. You got muscles. I know. I've seen them. You see, you seen I've the, seen them in that, seen in that, that thing that you did. Come on. Open the gifts, man. Open the gifts. Do you got it? Oh. It says, uh, oh, shit. Egon's Museum of Spores, Molds, and Fungus. I love Val. Thank you so much. Yeah, because you mentioned that you used to tell people that you used oh, to yeah. collect spores and monkeys yeah, see it? Uh, to, to your friends. Oh, I love That's it. That's awesome. Did you see the other things that were in there? There should have been two other oh. things in that package. Ah, oh, shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. Okay, one at a time. There you go. Philip <laughs> made me do it, and Dunder Mufflin race for yeah that long. Oh my god, I love it, dude. Thank you, dude. I'm super into this. So we opened it last week. Did not show me what it was. She's like, what is this? I'm like, this for me, I love it. <laughs> but I didn't see it until this time. I love it, dude. So I think this is for you. From you. Yeah, it is. I, I've gotten a lot of packages. Wait, wait. That door. is. That, I don't think that's from me. It's not. It no, mine, mine should be in a box. Yours should be in a box. From a, in, a, in a, from a, from a box. Really? Yeah. You sure? I'm pretty sure. I did not get you a shirt. I can tell you that. You did not get me a shirt. No. Someone else got you a shirt. Someone else got me a shirt. Yeah. So go look at the other bo- bo- things. This is, this is not from you. No, it's not from me. All right. So someone got me this, which is adorable, and uh, I guess we'll wrap it and back up, and I'll act surprised on uh, yeah, on yeah, uh, Christmas. whatever day. Okay. Uh, I'll go find a box, I guess. Give me the second. It should be th- we it's- not playing this well, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know who sent me the wrestling shirt that says free hugs. But <laughs> that happened. All right. And it's still in the box. Yeah, so there should be a tab on the back where you can rip it off and get what's in there. All right. All right. And open it. And it's a porn. Oh, no, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, ever since I got a vinyl record player, I've been wanting two albums. One I got right away, which was Meat Loaf's Bad Out of Hell. <laughs> and the other one was Pink Floyd's The Wall. You love that your dad, is- Rock Pal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is one of the best vinyl records ever to sit down and just put on and do shit to. Well, I, oh, I hope man. you like it, man. I hope you like it. I, I would make out with you right now, and if my parents were watching, maybe a little bit more. So know? I was but, thinking about what would you get more enjoyment out of, and I don't know about you, but I get most enjoyment out of listening to music. And so just yeah. having that, that, that vinyl record, I hope you get 9,000 plays out of it before it wears down. Dude, it's going to get 105,000 plays. It's <laughs> going to be awesome. I'm going to send that picture to my wife while we're reviewing movies. Man! Merry I Christmas, Christmas, dude. Already. I, I already got a t-shirt I didn't know I was getting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that happened. All right. Now everything feels weird in the world. I feel weird. Merry Christmas to you, Chris. And Merry the Christmas. four years now. we've been doing this. I know. Is it, I think this four is, years. Is this the only second year we've done gifts together? Or we've done more than that, right? No, we've done them every year. Usually we did them on the air when we were sitting at the table at your house. Oh, that's right. It was sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Um, I think uh I think Are I Are you ready to review one of your favorite directors of all times movie? We're talking Del Toro. Oh, Del Toro, bro. We are gonna talk some Del Toro. We're talking Nightmare Alley. Starring oh I'm sorry, directed by Guillermo del Toro. And we should tell people who don't know who Guillermo del Toro, other things he's maybe done, right? Uh he's done things like Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, both the Hellboys, Shape of Water, best you know, award winning, the Academy Award winning best best movie for uh, and an director I think right. Um, 
uh, Pacific Rim, which is not my favorite. Uh, but he's done some great movies, and this is his latest offering, uh, Nightmare Alley, starring the amazing Bradley Cooper as Stanton Carlisle. I mean, the world's hard enough as it is, guys. It's fucking hard enough as it is. And also, Keith Lynch is Dr. Little Thritter. I mean, what do you care? You know, if I care or don't care, what's it to you? Also, it's uh, uh, Tony Collette at the end of this year. It's got Willem Dafoe as Clem Holy. You killed them. We killed them. Also, Richard Jenkins as Rick Grindel. Rooney Mara as Molly Cahill. Cahill? Cahill? You are probably going to be a very successful computer person. And then that's uh, uh, Ron Perlman, Mary Steenbergen, David Stratham, Matt, just all kinds of people that you've seen everywhere and not everywhere. And this movie is called Nightmare Alley. Uh, go ahead and read the storyline for this one, pal. Oh, yeah, definitely. An extraordinary description of a freak show geek, alcoholic, and object, and the object of the voristic crowd's gleeful disgust and Darson going about his work at a county fair. Young Stan Carlson is working as a carny, and he wonders how, man, how a man could fall so low. There's no way in hell, he vows, that anything like that will ever happen to him. Uh, I don't think that's a great description for the movie. <laughs> um, no, it's not at all. It isn't at all. Let's see what we got. Um, okay, the top one. Elvin is Carney with a talent for manipulating people with a few well-chosen words. Hooks up with a female psychiatrist who's even more dangerous than he is. That's better. That's a little bit better. A little bit, but that's not, a little bit better. A little bit, not, not quite. Uh, this movie is two hours, 30 minutes long. Um, but, yes. Yes, so, it is. It's very long. So here's the thing. Uh, it's 17 hours long. <laughs> I uh, this okay so this has been been being made for a long time and they finally got their actors in a row and this movie reminds me of two things right uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a 1932 film Freaks but it's just like that movie there's a, a lot of that put in there have you seen Freaks? I know that yeah I know so, Freaks from 1932 that the, that one's it's a uh, it's something else and then uh, I haven't seen the original Nightmare Alley because it's a remake of a 1947, 46 film. I've seen yes. that. But this is one quite different uh, because I think that Del Toro, he does a lot of, there's lots of color, and lots of light tricks that wouldn't have been available in that time. Del Toro has a very, um, very particular style, especially visually. And visually, this movie is fucking gorgeous. Um, I couldn't get enough of the imagery in this movie. It's amazing. Um, Yes. And a funny thing about this is Bradley Cooper replaced Leonardo DiCaprio. Cap- 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 yeah, it was originally <laughs> supposed to play the lead. Yeah. And um, instead, Bradley Cooper took it. And because Leo wanted to go do another movie, which was by Paul Thomas Anderson, oh, you got which you. was called Liquor Seat. Uh, Liquor- Licorice, Licorice Pizza. Yeah, and then and then he wasn't even in it. Yeah, Bradley Cooper got that part too. Yeah. <laughs> <Bradley Cooper. laughs> Yeah, so uh, I we're going to see. Oh, oh, this is not a remake of the movie Nightmare Alley from 1947. It's not. This is a re-adaptation, re-adaptation. of the William okay. Lindsay's Grimson's novel. So it, I'm, I'm, about, I'm going to either probably say it follows it more, you know, than because the, the novel was really- the novel. Um, I didn't see the 1947 movie. I can only go off of what I saw here. Okay. Yeah. Well, and and what did you see? <laughs> Like, I guess the best way to put it was... Um, it is Del Toro. Yeah. Yeah. So it, just, like, right off the bat. It's dark. Um, it's dark. It's, it's dark. It, it's 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 skeezy. It's sleazy. It's it's also beautiful. It's also... Uh, also, shots are framed perfectly. Um, and all the, as always, the Del, Del Toro films, even if it's cheery, there's something dark underneath it. You know? Yeah. And... Um, it, it has a story that um, is really good. It's a good story. Um, the actors acted their asses off. Um, this also spans. This is not the, my favorite the, Del Toro. No, it's so not. But the, I'm, I'm the, gonna I'm gonna put it right then that then out. And it's very noir, and I love yeah, noir. Yeah. you know I'm a huge fan this of noir. Sp- this spans so. probably ten years. This movie. Yeah, 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 and it, it, it even shows in the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it's two years later, it's yeah. one year later, whatever. And um, 
something was missing in this movie. I don't know what it was, but something didn't hit all the buttons for me. So and, a lot of people talk about the shocking ending, which I saw at the beginning of the movie coming. Like, like I knew what was going to happen mm-hmm. by the end, but like, and so people were talking about the ending, but I don't really have a problem with the ending. I think it ended the way it should have and only could have, but I'm with you. This is my favorite Del Toro film. It is, it is, it is good. I will say that I like this movie, mm-hmm. but it's yeah. not, but it's, it's, um, and it, it will probably, I, I don't know if it'll be my top 10 at the end of the year though. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be in my top 10 at the end of the year. Um, but the acting in this movie was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, acting is fantastic. Um, like, uh, you acting could... is fact, fantastic. Um, and the other thing is just the fact that that every actor did their job. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the, especially when uh, Kate Blanchett and, uh, and Bradley Cooper was on the screen together, they played off of each other magnificently. Yeah. Um, the foe, every time he was on the screen, he stole every scene he was in, uh, just like he always does and everything. <laughs> and we'll talk a lot more about that guy here right. in just a little bit. Sure, sure. <laughs> and Because um, there's two people who I think stole the next movie we're going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, we'll talk about that. And it's not going to be the people you think it is. <laughs> um, I'm just going to tell you that right now. Also, um, it, it was just, Man, uh, dude, I liked the noir of it. I liked the buildup of things and uh, the buildup of the characters and how it went from, you know, being poor white trash to being pretty much like a rich asshole. And, (laughs) you know, um, that it was all great portrayed. But at the end... Do you think the fact that that, 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 there was not really a character to root for in this made me... There's a problem for you in this one. I I, I think yeah, I liked it. Li- I think it is. I think I liked it a little bit more than you. I'm gonna be honest. I think I liked it a little bit more than you. But um, but I think you know, we, you and I watch movies for different thing reasons or different things. We look for certain mm-hmm. certain things. Why we do the podcast. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not gonna give this a good rating. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying I'm just saying uh, the bits of it that I think people will pick out or pick at this movie when oh, they go to. You were one. I think I think I think it's the, the expectations we had for Del Toro film. You know? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm talking. This is the guy that gave me a movie that was all subtitles. <laughs> and to this day, I will watch any day of the freaking week. Yeah. And I am not a huge subtitle guy. I like to be able to hear, every, you know, yeah. what they're saying and understand it instead of just reading, you know, subtitles. Which is Pan's Labyrinth, one of the greatest uh, foreign-made movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was not Pan's Labyrinth. This was not Shape of Water. That's not but. Sense. It has that eerie noir feeling like both of them do. Like, this felt... <laughs> I want to mention something. I was talking to a friend about this movie, and they're like, how was it? I'm like, well, Bradley Cooper doesn't, doesn't fuck a fish in this one. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you got from Shape of Water, folks. Good night. Have a good day. All right. Um, I think there's a little more deeper of a meeting in that oh, movie. Okay, you think so? Okay. Yeah. For having sex with a fish. Oh, yeah. So... Um, or Aquaman, or whatever you want to call it. So... <laughs> but... But um, he does pull from the from those older movies a lot, like the the you know even the sort of not just a lot he he doesn't he pulls a lot from those movies, um, and you know there's a, there's a fuck word in here a few times and there's some titties I think right there's some titties you saw right. We see titties? I, I don't know. I didn't really count titties. I was dude. just I fucking. I'm just. I, was, I didn't think this was Girls Gone Wild. I was Del just Toro. fucking with you, dude. You know, <laughs> like Del Toro style. I, I'm not playing for that. And I don't know if you know this, Chris, but I'm going to tell you this one more time. My parents are listening right now. <laughs> I want. I want to mention something too. And this is this is just something I noticed, and you, know, my wife brought it up too. Is that uh, there's a scene when Bradley Cooper gets in the bath, and for a split second you see his whole dick. Like, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I mean, this... Again, my mom and dad. So what? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, anyway. what you guys, are you going to change who you are? <laughs> oh, my gosh, Chris. Chris. All right, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Helen. And what's your dad's name? Tom. I'm sorry, Helen, Tom, the, for uh, having to put your <laughs> son anyway, in a compromised let's position. Because if you, you weren't All listening, right. he would have he would have brought it more. But me, me, I don't no, know. No, 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 no. By any means. Um, so one thing's one thing straight. Um, mm-hmm. this movie is good. It is it is a hard R. Um, yeah. 
if not, I mean, because there's some gore scenes in this that are mm-hmm. pretty, mm-hmm. you know, uh, pretty a put to. And, uh, oh, man, the actors and actresses, they gave it its all. Um, I don't think this is going to get nominated for anything besides cinematography if it gets nominated for anything I was about to say that. I was about year. to say that. Like, um, to me, it's... The music was okay, but it wasn't. I don't know. There's some. I feel like there's just something missing in this movie. Like it was a movie. It was good, but it wasn't great, you know. And I feel mm-hmm. like if they had something, and I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're right with the not having a character to root for, or you know, anything like that. <laughs> but it, it's just, you know, I don't know. So uh, let me get some quotes, and then uh, let's move on to our rating on this one. Sure. Because we got a, we got other stuff to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we got, do. We got a huge one to talk about. Folks around here care who you are. Oh, folks around here don't care who you are or what you've done. You're a maybe, and maybe are really, and maybes are really bad for me. No good comes out of a spook show. People are desperate to tell you who they are, and they will if you allow them. Tote the line, don't fuck with me. That's the first lesson. You ready for what the world and everything and everything around it? My pen went out halfway through this, by the way. And I had to start taking <laughs> quotes on my phone. You have a smoother line, but you run a racket just like me. Dames like you always have mommy or daddy issues i know you're no good and i know because neither am i i love that man i can't read that one because <laughs> <know>. whatever's <laughs> missing in you it isn't whatever's missing in you isn't missing me and you smell like you pissed your pants beat it it will keep you in coffee and cakes plus a good place to see mister i was always born for this Give me, give it to me. I want to hear what you quote. I want to hear your your number on this. One, My bro. number is a three point eight. Um, it's it's not a three point what eight. Eight. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you. I <laughs> actually, I, that's uh, actually, I'm going to go a little lower on this one. I three point seven. I wasn't take a shot <laughs> for people who, yeah. who yeah, put these. If you're listening, if you're following, doing the Neil and Chris drinking game, yeah. please take a shot for that point. Oh, uh, um. Literally, um, I, I, I I don't know what it is missing, but something was missing for it. And you know me, I was really big about this movie. This is like one of the top five I wanted to see this December. Like, because you're it's, like, what about okay, this movie? What about okay, this movie? So, I was like, Nightmare Alley, we got to see that. So it's and, it's very well made. I'll say that. It's nothing, nothing. It's a very well made, but it's not, it's not as captivating as his other work. Like, like this is a top-notch woman movie. Cinematography's on point. The acting's on point. The, the story is up there. And it's all there, but but it didn't come together as good as it could have. But it's a very well-made movie. Uh, I want to mm-hmm. make that clear. This is masterclass filmmaking, but it's just it didn't do it for me in all the spots that I like to do it for. You know, you know, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't uh, lick my ear. And it didn't, it didn't tweak my nipple the way the other enough. camera film <laughs> camera films do. So. uh yeah, that made like three point eight for me. I like the movie. I would recommend it, um, but it's just not. It's, it's, it's not. It's not as good as you know, Shape of Water or Pain's Labyrinth. You know, it's just not that. Not as good as those movies. Yeah, it's definitely not Pink Floyd the Wall. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. So now we do me guessing the Rotten Tomato score. Yeah, uh, from audiences and then the critics. So uh, let me see. From the audience, I'm gonna say 57, 63, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Uh, okay, yeah. but I was close. Yeah, I figured they they wouldn't. They, they got a uh, census on this. Uh, they don't. They don't. They didn't do that for this one. So okay, and the critics are gonna go a little higher. They're gonna be 72, percent 79, not too far off. Man, <laughs> but, I mean, I was but, off pretty much the same number. <laughs> I'm gonna read the consensus, but then we're talking about the disparity between the two. So um. Yeah. Uh, critics' consensus is, while I may not hit quite as hard as the original, Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley is a modern noir thriller with a pleasantly pulpy spin. And I'm going to bring up the pulp part. This is a very pulpy movie. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like pulp, pulp novel. Or, you know what? 
Pulp Fiction. Nothing with Pulp Fiction. No, no listen. Pulp Fiction. So the audience went lower than the, the went lower than the critics, and you think it's because the critics paid attention to the filmmaking aspect of this as opposed to just a, as a movie? Why do you think there's a disparity? Do you think? Why do I think there's a disparity? Like, like, no, the like, why do you think critics went higher than than the audience did? Because sometimes Cause it's the other way around. Always, because critics will always go higher on artsy movies. Oh, uh, this is an artistic film, no, no doubt. Yeah, and the thing is, all right, this is the way I, I gotta I gotta say this too. If people don't support films like this, then we're not going to get better films like this. Yeah. We're not going to get a Shape of Water. Why is it Del Toro, a guy who's won how many Academy Awards at this time? Several. You know, <laughs> yeah. Why is it so hard for him to get funding for a movie? Because it's not. Because it's not a comic book movie. It's not a big, big, big movie. No, he just big makes action movie. He just makes three movies, though, and that's a but yeah, the, yeah, and. And people need to go see movies like this, like this, uh, Death of the Nile, Knives Out, you know, uh, things like that. Licorice Pizza. Licorice <laughs> Pizza. Because yeah. if not, we're going to not have these movies anymore, and the only person that's going to be making them is like fucking Hallmark. <laughs> and you know what? Have you watched Hallmark movies? Not that good. <laughs> and so we, we don't need to keep it on, on the Hallmark channel with stuff like this. All right. Before we get to the news, mm -hmm. I noticed something. And I think it was just because we were both excited and forgot where we put our Christmas gifts from yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you forgot to tell everybody where oh, they you, find us. You find us on movies. And I forgot to do the... Was <laughs> the, the, the. Well, it real quick? Okay. You can find All us right. on online at Network on Facebook at facebook.com slash movies don't suck podcast. We're on Twitter at NTS podcast. We're on Instagram at NTS podcast. If you want to send us an old-fashioned email, go to uh, uh, write info at movies don't suck net or... Movies don't suck podcast at Gmail. We got two, whatever. Uh, if you want uh, to go give money to us, it's Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash movies don't suck. We are on Bonfire. Go to Bonfire slash movies don't suck. Something to do. You can find t shirts and shit with our stuff on it. And some other stuff Neil's put on there because he's from Tulsa and he likes wrestling and other things. But you can also find shirts with our logo. If you want our mugs on your, on your, on your chest, it's there too. No mugs, though, just our faces. On a shirt, uh, and then um, you can find us on all stream platforms. You're either watching us on Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube right now. You know what? Show, you know, show your friends, I guess, right? Yeah, tell everybody, tell everybody, so we get more followers, more people like you that enjoy movies or, and enjoy podcasts. Or you can download or you, vlogs, or you can download the podcast, which is this is what this is. This is a podcast, guys. Um, yeah. so, and we edit all out all the stuff that we we do randomly throughout it. Chris is a really good editor. I thank you, pal. And so, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, follow, subscribe, and do all that. Business that we are going to put a shine light on today is going to be Fur Babies Bakery in Plano, Texas. I do not want any Fur Baby Bakes of Bakery. Like, what? Okay, keep going. I don't know what they are. <laughs> Cause it's not, like what it sounds like is that you're eating the ch you're eating like you know your their commitment at Fur Babies Bakery is to provide a healthy and tasty treat to improve the lives of your fur babies one bite at a time. These are little cakes, cookies, and donut shaped dog treats Yum. that are ridiculous. I bought uh, and they got waffles. They got uh, not macarons, but they mm -hmm. got pepperones. They call them. They got doggy fries. Uh, they even got. Good boy dog beer variety pack, <laughs> which comes in crotch sniffing ale and IPA, <laughs> IPA a lot in the yard, IPA a lot in the yard. Get it? Yeah. Uh, the women there, uh, the the people that work there, were really really nice. I picked up a couple of donuts and uh, the macaroons for my dog. They they loved it. my dog Alistair loved the treats. Um, so you're, seriously, you're you a cute little them. fucker, dude. He's so cute, your dog. Yeah, my dog is awesome. My dog makes me happy in places I can't even tell you. And who does he like more? Like, what do you mean between me and my wife? Mm -hmm. I don't know, dude. That's just rude to ask that. Who does I, your dog like more? Leah, one hundred percent. I'm sure he likes her more, but I mean it's for different reasons. At nighttime, he likes me more because I let him out and feed him pepperonis. Okay, um, <laughs> but. You can find Fur Babies at FurBabiesBakery.com or you can go at Facebook at Fur Babies Bakery, T Bakery TX. 
Uh, they were played in T- Plano, Texas, but they will send you out shipments. And uh, if you live there in Texas, you can actually go there. They have doggy day spas, or they call the paw spa. I mean, they're really adorable. They're a good, they're a good little shop, man. All right, you real, ready for some movie real news? Real quick, I want to mention that I saw on Reddit this guy had gotten these um these uh these cookies. They were frosted. They were like Christmas trees. He took a bite mm-hmm. of it and realized it was weird. It was dog treats. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah. All right. I, I got um. I got some um. News? I got some news, bro. Let's do it, dude. Let's yep. do it. I'm ready. Yep. Oh, uh, and uh. You were probably. That's, were... that's not it. Sorry. <laughs> Chris, this is movies that don't suck and some of the new news. I'm gonna tell Chris stuff I read on the internet. He's gonna act like he likes it, or he's gonna punch me in the face. Well, I'm gonna punch you in the face through. Through the podcast, it'd be impossible because I'm all the way in, in, here in Kansas, and you're in you're in Oklahoma. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right, Chris, the movie we just talked about, Nightmare Alley. Yeah. Um, if you want to, for in the next month, there's a limited theatrical release of a black and white version mm. out there for you to see. Now, um, that's just if you're into it. It'll be starting. Um, the Cinema Hall screening the black and white version include the landmark from January 14th to January 20th, AMC from January 14th to January 20th, the new Brave Relief Cinema January 15th and 16th, and Los Lieso Theater American Cinema Act from January 21st to the 23rd. So if you want to go see a black and white version of Nightmare Alley, cool, go see it. <laughs> Dan, Aykroyd Dan Aykroyd has an idea for how the all the, the each member of the original Ghostbusters can return for each one of the next sequels because they want to do four, five, and six. Man, uh, okay, so here's what I heard about this, right? But I talked to my wife about it. So Dan Ackford for the, yeah, I don't know, for the 20 years between the uh, Ghostbusters uh, 2 and the new one, he's been saying, oh, yeah, Ghostbusters 3 is in development. You know, he's been saying that for, you know, 25 years or whatever, how long it's been since those two. So I am sort of, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty like, like whatever (laughs) about it. Cause Mm -hmm. I, I, cause uh, the person that's to get on board is, you know, Jason Reitman, right? The director. Right. Right. So, And, and everybody else. So what he wants is he wants everyone to die. Okay. In each film. He's like, I like the guy. I think Bill and I should be killed in the next one, or maybe we wait. And why not use the living Ghostbusters, Ernie, Billy, and myself, for four, five, and six, go until we're gone, and then there'll be a time for tributes. Death is going to take us soon enough anyway. Okay. Okay, Dan. <laughs> I uh, I hope that's not true. I hope you're around for another 100 years while that's going to happen. But yeah, but he he's honest about that stuff. You know how into the mythical arts and stuff like that. He yeah, he's is. a very uh, a culty guy. Yeah, he's he wrote the original Ghostbusters <laughs> off of stories he got told. Yeah, and you he's know? you guys don't know uh, uh, Dan Aykroyd is what you call a believer of the occult and like UFOs yes. and all kinds of shit. Huge huge believer. I don't know why he doesn't have a show where he just tells about those. He stuff. does. He does. Does he really? Well, it's uh, he's the host. Not is he still come on History Channel? Um, with Dan Aykroyd going there, he also oh, really? he also sold, he also sold his vodka that sold in the skull. Yeah. So, Stephen Colbert this week did one of the funniest rap videos for Lord of the Rings, right? Ever, Lord of the Rings. It's called the number one trilogy because he was upset that Harry Potter is getting all this love this year, and it's the twenty year anniversary of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Do you, do you, do you think it's the best trilogy in film history, though? Do you personally? I mean, the first, the first three. Come on, dude. It, yeah. It, it's, what what trilogy feels more like one long movie than fucking Lord of the Rings? Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm trying to think. Like, like, uh, it's just I can't think of any better. Especially I mean, if you watch the extended cut. Oh, dude. Now, what made the original Star Wars? You know, New Hope and Empire Strikes Back and mm-hmm. and Return of the Jedi. Is that as good as Lord of the Rings? I don't think so, just because Luke and Leia kiss. Oh, that, that that brings it down to you? Yeah, because then that means they didn't know that Luke and Leia was going to be brother and sister. 
and then it got thrown in at some point. I think I think they did know, and they just wanted to make everyone uh, not they think so. Wanted to, they didn't want some incest in that movie. Uh, they didn't fuck. I mean, I don't think. All right, uh, Ghost. Uh, this is a video game, I guess. Ghost of. I'm gonna butcher this last part of it. Ghost of Tushami. Uh, Ghost of Shimi? I don't, I don't know. What, yeah, Ghost of Shimi, that's okay. it. Ghost of Shimi. Yes. The video game, right? into a movie. Yeah, the video yeah. game, yeah. And it's being turned into a movie. And that the script is going to be uh, closer to the mo- to the video game than anything. It says, we want to do it right, and you know, the video game adaptions can go. So we're taking our time and doing it right. We're working very closely with the game developers to make sure we stick do what's great about it and what fans of the game would be very happy with and what we're working on. Good luck. <laughs> That's all I have to say about be that. with you. Yeah, yeah. Billy Zane mm-hmm. wants to bring Phantom. back one of the best superhero movies of all time. Phantom, right? Yes. He wants to be in a legacy sequel where it's like a sequel and he's passing it down like how the fan he got passed down from his... Uh, Phantom Father in the original movie. Now, do you remember so, uh, the subway? They sold these Phantom rings, like you get like a like a like a metallic ring with a Phantom skull. Yeah, do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, That's yeah, the same. yeah. I still, I, I still want one. <laughs> and uh, this Billy Zane's quote is: "To be honest, a Phantom return would be quite interesting. Twenty years later, it's a father to son business and a bit of a handoff. And I dug him because he didn't have superpowers. Really, it was just kind of a super humane." Uh, again, the moral compass could be a nice reminder. So, right out of the comic universe, I'd say the character would be a huge. Did you read the Phantom uh, comic books, or were they? Yes, I have a few. I actually have. Uh, I have. I have about I think ten of them. I think because I bought them purposely because I love the Phantom. Oh, you love the movie. The movie. So, w- mm-hmm. what? Is, it was a comic strip, right? Like originally. Yes. So, in like the 1940s, and then it joined Flash Gordon for a minute. It, so is it okay? Did, did, okay, I'm just trying to figure out like if there's like if it's Marvel or DC or something else. It's something else, I guess, Marvel. right? Okay. Yep. All right. Um. All right. Where are we at next? Henry Cavell wants to bring another video game to the either the big screen or to the show. And he wants to play the main character. What game, what game is this? One of the biggest open world games of all time. Who wants to do Skyrim? Bigger. Yeah, the, Red Dead. Oh, he wants to do Red Dead. Redemption. I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he wants to do two because he wants to play the Arthur. You know. Because you're trying to be both an IP and a company together, which is a tricky thing to do. So certainly, I don't want to put myself in any corners of that, but there's plenty of games out there. I've actually started playing Red Dead Redemption 2, and I know I'm a little bit late to that party, but I started playing it, and I'm really, really enjoying it. And so something like that, I think, would be epic to turn into a fun movie. So I will tell you something. I have have Red Dead Redemption 2, and when my brother moved here, uh, he took... He sat down to work for three weeks, and instead he played Red Dead Redemption Two and got a hundred percent in it in a couple of weeks. He had because that's all he did one day like, when he woke up. So yeah, man, uh, he's a big fan of Arthur Morgan. Uh, I love Red Dead Redemption Two; it's very really fun. So yeah, I, I'm all about that. Yeah, I am too. I, I really do. Bam Margera's uh, lawsuit is going forward. I was going for jackass. Okay, well, yeah, the court has uh, gave a ruling that uh, this is a complete victory for Bam to demonstrate that her claims are sound. Said attorney, um, the court said uh, baseless. The court wrote, and it's okay. The court uh, disagreed with the defendants for claiming that Nigeria lacked the com- uh, to bring the suit and offered evidence of his own behalf. Um, I know he's in rehab right now and he has like guardianship going on hmm. and it's like, so, you know, uh, I guess I, hopefully he wins, not wins. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I either. just hope he's doing, uh, to be honest, I just hope he's doing good, bro. I just hope <laughs> he's doing good. Um, Robert Rodriguez has spoken with James Cameron and they are working out the details of Adelita battle angel sequel. Okay. I mean, I was like 
pretty lukewarm on the first one, but mm-hmm. I knew I knew after seeing it that they're like, okay, so uh, Rod Rod is gonna want to make another one. So uh, good for Rod Rod. Well, I guess I guess maybe I'll come around. You know. All right. So Sony. Sony. Owners. Disney. Marvel. <laughs> are developing a bunch of Spider-Mans for the MCU's future. Oh, so they're working together. Yes. They're actively developing post-Spider-Man plans for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm. Not just the Spider-Man Universe, which is on Sony. Yeah. Kevin Foggy reported. So, wow. You know, way to go. We'll talk about it more. <laughs> Do you ever watch Cobra Kai? No, man. We talked about this. Okay. Okay. Season oh, no, four no, is yeah. about to release. Okay, I did watch the first season of Cobra Kai. Yeah. All right. Season four is about to be released on Netflix. Mm-hmm. They just wrapped filming on season five already. Jesus. So the people. Yeah. It's just, it's ready. They're like, Hey, we have the time. Let's do it. Killmonger is coming back in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Oh, so we're having Michael B. Jordan come back to do this? It's come longer? Yes. Uh, although it does not explain who the young hero is, fans have created theories based on it, but Killmonger is going to be back in the new Black Panther. So I don't know what they're going to do with that. Um, what We Do in Shadows Season 4 has just wrapped filming this week as well. You're which excited. means we have a Season 4 of What We Do in Shadows. Um, that's awesome. Uh, Kingsman 3. The Kingsman. Not the, not the oh. Kingsman. Not the Kingsman, but Kingsman. Kingsman 3, you know, based yeah, off yeah, yeah. of the actual beginning, will finish the Aggies and Harry story. So, so that's going to be so the here, end of that. Here's the thing I think we need to do, by the way, because we talked about doing the best of 2010. Uh, based on 2021 at the end of the six. And we, Kingsman is out this week as well. Um, mm-hmm. I want to see it. Do you want to see it? I want to see it. Of course I want to see it. So of course I wanna are see we going to talk about this on the show or not? What? A Kingsman. I don't, I don't know. Talk about it at the end, I guess. I mean, <laughs> we're in the middle of a news segment, man. I don't know what you, do you want me to critically Oh, I, I did want to say, you know, I got the death and the TV. My inaugural movie watch will be Kingsman 2 because I've not actually seen the Kingsman, the Kingsman 2. Gold oh, Lord. really? Yeah, we're going to watch That's that tonight. That's funny. All right. Two more stories. Two one. more stories. Let's do it. In the UK, they took a survey of over 1,500 people rating the top video game movies of all time adaptation. What's number one? What do you think is number one? I don't know. Tomb Raider? I don't know. You're correct. You said it. Yes, uh, the 2018 version of Tomb Raider. Oh, well, the Lucia Vikander. Is, okay, is, it's not yeah, is number one. It's not as bad as everyone says things to think. It's not. It's not the best. Do, but do you know what number two is? No, I don't know. What number two is Sonic the Hedgehog. That's better than the first Tomb Raider. I mean, that last Tomb Raider. I think the first Tomb Raider, 2001's Laura Crafts Tomb Raider, with a uh, with Angelina is Jolie. number three. Okay. Yep. It's number three. Number four is 2021's Mortal Kombat. <laughs> number number five is Resident Evil: The Final Chapter. Number six is Assassin's Creed. Number seven is Monster Hunter. Number eight is De- Detective Pikachu. Number nine. That's is way Warcraft. better than a lot of them. That's way better. I know. Than I know. I, I agree with you on that. Number nine is Warcraft. And number 10 is Hitman Agent 47. So I do know that, that most of the, the the latter five were critically panned, except for Detective Pikachu. It's, to me, if, you, if I were you and you give me that list, I would change it up a bit. You know? I'd probably put Sonic at the top of that because, yeah. I'll be fair, uh, the movies that, for some reason, video movies are pretty doomed from the start, It's but Sonic just made it fun. I, I really like Sonic. I'm looking forward to the second one. Uh, call mm-hmm. me child. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked it just fine. All right. Last but not least, are you ready for this shit? Let's do it. I'm ready, ready for this shit. shit. Yeah. Give it to are me. Are you ready for this I'm shit? I'm ready for it, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. 
get ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. You know how? Do you know how? You know, you played a part really well. When twenty years later they ask you to rephrase that role, and they're like, "Hey, you should rephrase this role." And did this person agree to this to this reprisal? And that person was like, "Yeah, I'll do it." But then, when the studio comes to you and says, "Hey, you should rephrase this role for a second movie," you know that by far you have to tech, you gotta take your hat and 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 just get it off to them because they are now considered the greatest of all times. That's right. Michael Keaton has signed up again to be the Batman for the new Batgirl movie. Wow. <laughs> yes. I want to see what this is going to look like. I'm really interested. I mean, well, I feel, I, so, you know, Michael Keaton in town for the third one is Burton was a part of it. But I think he must have this, uh, must have a, uh, he must have a lot of confidence in Matt Reeves and the new Batman mm-hmm. to, to sign on again, you know? So I'm excited to see his bat stuff go on. I'm excited to see my <laughs> Batman again. You know? He's Batman, dude, and I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. All right, man, we got to get into this because I know it's been like an hour since we started, but, I mean, we had a lot of ups and downs in this last hour, yeah, let's we, be honest. Yeah, no, it's just it's been hard on us. It's been, it's been really hard. hard. It's been hard. It's been a whole lot of running upstairs, downstairs, to the side, to the left. But we got to get started. Let's hit that news music and let's get into this, man. This is going to be a deep dive of another. That was the movies that don't suck and some of the new news. I told Chris everything that happened in the last five days since we talked last. Yeah. And now we are going to talk about the biggest movie of the year. Spider-Man No Way Home. Directed by John Watts. Spider-Man No Way Home. So for people who don't watch us that normally, we will be talking about giving our normal non-spoiler review of this movie. And then uh, after, we'll give you a fair warning to, hey, we'll tell you what we're doing next week, and then we'll fucking leave and give you 10 seconds to turn this off, and we're going to spoil the living fuck out of this movie. Um, oh, I'm going to attack this. As soon as that spoiler comes up, I'm going to go in... I'm gonna go in deep. I'm gonna go so deep. It's gonna be. It's gonna be like I'm jumping into the ocean. I, I mean, it's gonna be crazy deep. This is a uh, directed by John Watts. He was like a music video director, but then he went on and started directed Cop Car. I don't know if you saw Cop Car with Kevin Bacon. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. And then of course he directed Spider-Man: Homecoming, Spider-Man: Far From Home, and now he's doing No Way Home. And when we were talking about, he's also and he's on the Onion News Network. Let's talk about the Onion. Uh, Real quick, I also mentioned that it, John Watts also signed on to do the reboot of Fantastic Four. Just so you know. Yes, and he's also did Homecoming, Free, uh, Far From Home. I just said that. Like, oh, did you? Yeah. And I, I didn't listen to this you. This movie was... stars the amazing Tom I'm Holland sorry. as Peter Parker. What ah, the? I know what you're gonna say. You should not be here. I was gonna go home. I'd want to hear but it. But it was such a long way down, and I just thought about shooting. And now I gotta hear. Kind of stuck to the side of the ship, and this suit is. Ridiculously intuitive, by the way. So, if anything, it's kind of your fault. Though. Uh, this also stars <laughs> Zendaya as MJ. MJ, I am Spider Man. What? That's what you were gonna say that you're Spider Man. Also, uh, it stars Bendit Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange or Stephen Strange. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Also, Jacob Batalon as Ned Leeds. Hey. Can I be your guy in the chair? What? You know how there's a guy with a headset. Also, John Favreau serves Happy Hogan. Uh, I don't want to even talk really about this too much, but there's lots of people in this movie, and I don't want to give anything away. So let's just get into the do the storyline. This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get into the storyline, and uh, we'll we'll do our non-spoiler part real quick, mm-hmm. and then we'll we'll <laughs> ruin it later. All right. <clears throat> Peter Parker's secret identity is revealed to the entire world. Desperate for help, Peter turns to Doctor Strange to make the world forget that he is Spider-Man. The spell goes horribly wrong and shatters the multiverse, bringing monstrous villains that could destroy the world. 
So this movie is two and a half hours long as well. But that's All right, so three three things that we can talk about because they're in the trailer. Mm-hmm. So we can talk about. Okay. We can talk about Green Goblin. Talk about Doc Ock. We can talk about Doc Ock and uh, Jamie Foxx. Yeah. And plus they did a whole media tour as well. Yeah. The so, three of them together. So they, they so, show up, right? I mean, yeah. I, I, I forgot that Hamill Burris was in this as Coach, uh, Coach Wilson. But I'm not mentioning that. Yeah, right. dude. They, there's so many random people in this damn movie. So many people. Um. All right. This is what I'm going to say. What's the best way to say this? This is in game for Spider-Man fans. In game. So you're thinking the next one will be will be the. Um... So this is no, in game. Not Infinity War in game. Okay, so you think it's in game? I mean in game, like this is the in game, like this is like oh, my okay, Infinity War. We'll go with Infinity War. Okay. But if you watched all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, your payoff was Infinity War, mm-hmm. where everybody comes together. In the same tone, if you watched all the Spider-Man movies. All of them, mm-hmm. like even the Sam Raimi, the Amazing Spider-Man ones, you know, Spider-Man 1, 2, 3. Uh, if you watch Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, if you watch Tom Holland's Homecoming, Far From Home, now uh, this one. Um, this movie is the ultimate payoff for all those hours of watching anything Spider-Man. There are so many Easter eggs, not only to Spider-Man the movies, but Spider-Man, the comics, Spider-Man, even Spider-Ver, uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, the animated movie. I there's a nod that to that. Yeah. Dude, that's one of the best. That, this movie. The, 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 uh, the, 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 into the multiverse, the Spider-Verse, that one's a lot, of, a lot better than some of the Spider-Man movies. A lot better. Yeah, to you. <laughs> this, to me, is probably the most epic and best Spider-Man movie ever. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm wondering what you're gonna give the score on this. Oh, you'll know what the score is because <laughs> it's it, it's if this ain't the top three for the end of the year, I don't know what could be. Okay, because this movie gives you parts of the Spider-Man universe. Um, in the past. Uh, I'm going to go example of Amazing Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield. Some of the problems they had with Spider-Man movies was that they overfilled it. That there was too many villains, too many origin stories that they were trying to tell in those movies. This movie has so many villains, so many heroes in it, and it did not suffer from that. It did it right. It, it was ambitious. It. it was a very ambitious movie. It was more than ambitious. Because when we get to the spoiler part, I'm going to talk about what I'm talking about here. But what you think is going to happen probably is going to happen. And then on top of that, it's not what you think. People aren't coming onto this movie to just do cameos. They're not like, hey, we're here for this one last fight, or we're here for this, and then we're gone. Each character had a little room to breathe. Each character came to the forefront. Um, One thing I can say for sure, um, because we can talk about certain characters because they've been talked about and stuff. One, Zendaya was up front. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, instead of being the girl in the background, the love interest that Peter can't get to, now she's in the forefront of this movie. Uh, Marissa Tromaine did a great job. Benedict Cumberbatch did a great job where you didn't know exactly <laughs> what was going on with Doctor Strange. Um, uh, William Defoe, his part, uh, I'm epic. Uh, just epic. And uh, I'll talk more about that in the spoiler part. Um I think each person brought their A game to this movie. And I think it all came together really, really, really well. Chris, give me your thoughts. Okay. So I mentioned that 
that uh, the best to me the best made movie that did this podcast the best made one is is uh, Nightmare Alley. This one is the most fun one. Of the of the movies we've seen, uh, it's it's uh it's. I don't good. know how fun it can be when I cry twice. Uh, we're getting there. So um, <laughs> but it's packed with action. It's packed with emotion. It's packed with it's packed with a lot of stuff, and it's ambitious for take, taking it on. But they pull it off. They pull it off exceedingly well. Uh, the yes. Um, you know everyone. It's I find this movie's. It's hard to not like. I, can, I imagine I, I I can't imagine going in this and leaving me like, man, I didn't really like it. I'm like, mm, no, this is a good movie. I enjoyed this movie quite a bit, and I yeah, and I I did cry. I shed a tear. I shed a couple. Of them. I got a question. All right, I saw an article about this that people shouldn't do this anymore in a movie theater, and I was like, yeah, fuck you. Um, but did people applaud in your movie theater? Not the end, but then when people, certain people showed up, or certain characters they really like showed up, I guess I'm applause. And I was like, hmm, I'm not gonna applaud for it, but did you? Oh yeah, I, I freaking stood up and yelled. I was like, we, because I saw two trailers, and that's it. I I avoided all contact when this movie hit the theaters. I I wasn't on social media all week. <laughs> like I literally just stopped. I, I went to YouTube and watched wrestling videos and just kept keeping wrestling in my feed. So then wrestling was like the only thing that and football, uh, because my Colts beat the Patriots this week. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but my, my whole theory was just to get it out of my algorithm, get it out of my algorithm so that, you know, video for comic book movies and movies wouldn't pop up in my stuff for a week. So I would not get ruined on stuff. I did not get ruined. I knew things were rumored. I knew I knew there's rumors about the rumor world. Yeah. But this was like one of those that I was just like, nah, man. I I'm I I I want I want this to be just you know as with big a surprise as I could. Well the MCU does so well, and I I mean the Sony is still but they had people that were part of the MCU in this. So what they do so well is they balance the action and the inf and the emotion with humor, because yeah, yeah, because you need that. And you got to do that with Spider Man because Spider Man has a lot of those witty comebacks, yeah, one yeah. of those witty one liners. Yeah, you and know? so and so when they did, I mean, Marvel does that best. You know, they're not over mm -hmm. they're not overly serious, but they're serious and they need to be. Um, they're Full of action. I mean, right away, this is this is how you want an action movie to look like, uh, and it's always Marvel does it really well, you know. Yeah. And, and it's but again, it's this is not my this is probably my second favorite Spider Man movie under uh, Into the Spider Verse. In the Spider Verse, still better than me. I've never seen anything like that movie. So like to me. Like this is a great this is a great Spider Man movie. It's just this my is favorite. the live action into the Spider Verse. Okay. And to my opinion. Okay. In but, my opinion. Okay, but what I'm saying is that uh again, I'm not I don't watch movies for Spider Man or for you know I'm not a comic book movie guy. Marvel does them best, right? And mm -hmm. I it's hard not to like this movie. I like this movie quite a bit. Um Yeah. Um and uh, all right. But but you want to get you want to get into the spoilers on this, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, get get some quotes on that. I want to I want to yeah. rip into this like okay. more than I want right, to rip right, into. All right, guys. Uh, when Neil's gonna get some quotes, we'll give our score, and then if you've seen this movie or if you want it spoiled for you, which you shouldn't, stay on watching. Yeah, yeah. You know, besides yeah. that, um, we can't help you. Yeah. We gave you plenty of warning four times now. All right, let's read some quotes. I, I want to mention this would be longer if we had if we didn't want to spoil it. Like, like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, they, I'm sure they get it, bro. Okay, I'm sure they get it. Right. We, we've given our visions. Okay, we've given. Hey, it's a good movie. It, if you like comic book movies, you'll like this movie. If you like stuff like that, cool. If you weren't Stacy, I guess you'd think this movie sucked. Um, you you know, want to who? What? Martin Scorsese. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, he fucked that guy. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. No, I like Scorsese. It's wrong. At one he's point, wrong. I started. I started writing on my quotes page. I started writing down Easter eggs. Uh, 
Oh, and yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go back and find them. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll find it. Okay. But so I got to go through that to make sure. He can't go to my house. My dad will kill you. I thought you said he liked me. Well, not anymore. <laughs> Spider Menace, aka War Criminal. Was that a good JK? Okay, anyway. Well, I mean, JK Simmons <laughs> was just being Alex Jones the whole fucking, whole fucking yeah, movie. Alex Jones, <laughs> get my supplements. Anyway, <laughs> I'm the most famous person in the world, and I'm still broke. Oh, no. Yes. Stop. Yes, my spider lord. <laughs> Accept this appointment and you will never expect this appointment and you'll never be disappointed. Do you remember the full moon party? No. Exactly. Damn. How did you know your magic some How do you know your magic? Sometimes I get like a tingling in my hands. You should probably see a physician about that. <laughs> Go ahead and Scooby do this shit, please. <laughs> Ask him if there's like a tree monster or a man as a tree. Dude, it's just a dream. Chill. <laughs> when you try to fix people, there's always circumstances. I don't want to do did. That I don't want to I don't want to die by some guy dressed like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Half face says the man that just handed Man, I can't read. I, I mean, to be honest, it's in a full theater. I mean, like every seat was full. Yeah, yeah. Um with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. finally said in the Spider Man movie. Finally. Can you clean up the webs? You just kind of shat all over the room. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Are you going into battle dressed as like a cool youth pastor? <laughs> that I was, was in the. In, that was the biggest slap. That was the biggest laugh in the whole movie for a lot of people. <laughs> Dude, right? I was in the Avengers. Awesome. What is that? Like a band? <laughs> I thought you would be black. That's all. I thought Spider Man would be black. A black Spider Man has to be out there, right? Gotta be. Nod to Miles. Nod to Miles. Yeah. Are you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been stabbed before. <laughs> all right. That's it, man. That's all I wrote down. I try to make it as vague as possible due to the fact that some right. of those are kind of so spoilers. If you know, I give it. my score first on the rally. Now it's your turn to do the score first when you're in this movie. Oh, dude, 4.9. Uh, okay. Literally out the fucking gate. Okay. I would I would have gone into another theater and rewatched this right away after watching it. And then after I left that theater, I would have walked back in the theater again and rewatched it again. Okay. And after leaving that theater, I would have gone and watched it again. I would have Star Wars the shit out of this movie if I could. Okay. If I didn't have a life and I'm an adult and I have to do things. I liked it. Uh, probably 4.1 may free for me. 4.2. It's it's a good Spider-Man movie. But again, it's a Spider-Man movie. So uh, anyone who loves comic books, that's for them. Also, lots of fan service. Lots mm-hmm. of fan service. Um, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. So for people who are big Spider-Man people, like like I'm um, looking at one right now, like you, uh, this is going to be rap reality. It's going to make your... Uh, your balls hurt afterwards in a good way. So, uh, I have points. plenty of Spider Man comics right in that final yeah. captain, buddy. Yeah, so, lots of them. So, uh, uh, why don't you go ahead a and guess the big ones, I should say. Why don't you go ahead and guess the critics, uh, the audience score on this one? 99. Good point. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Audience says, audience says, Woo! audience says, packed with action, emotion, surprises. Spider-Man No Way Home is franchise fan service at its finest. Okay. Now the critics score on this. 86. 94. Oh! I didn't think it'd be that high, but... Critics okay, consensus is a bigger, bolder Spider-Man sequel. No Way Home expands the franchise's scope and stakes without losing sight of its humor and heart. 
Um, yeah, it's it's a good movie. It's a it's a four point two. That's it's a really good movie. Again, for me, um, yeah. If you've seen the other Spider Man movies, definitely go see the Spider Man movie. If you haven't seen the other Spider Man movies, uh, st- I think you'll still enjoy it. I, I don't think you, you really yeah. need to know the whole. They kind of give enough evidence of what, why, and who, and where, and why that it's perfectly fine. Okay. So, um, guys, next week we're talking about Licorice Pizza and Matrix Re- Resurrection. Um, yes. So, uh, if you guys have not seen Spider-Man No Way Home, go see it, come back, and <laughs> listen to this part. If you have seen it, stick around. You know, it's got tons of Easter eggs, and I got some shit to say, too. Um, so, yes. uh, uh, we're going to give you a little bit of time. Uh, so, just listen to Sleigh Bells for about five seconds, and then we'll get into it. So, we're back, and let me ask you a question. Who... Which Spider-Man do you expect to show up first besides uh, besides Tom Holland? First, we got to talk about the first surprise before okay. the two spider Okay, fine, fine, fine. Because that's, I think, just a little bit bigger than the two Spider-Man. Really? Are you, who are you talking about? Charlie Cox, Daredevil... Okay. The lawyer. That was the that, first time you know people that, clapped. That was the first time people yeah, clapped. And you know why? Why? You know what that just did? No. Oh, it, that it, means, it means all those Netflix shows are now MCU. We can still watch them. Leo wants to go back and watch Daredevil. Should we? Yeah. Watch well, Daredevil and uh, Punisher and Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, too. Um, Jessica Jones, I'd go Daredevil, Punisher, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage. Like, those are good. Don't watch the Iron Fist one. And don't okay. want, the Defenders was all right. Okay. But, but uh, yeah, Daredevil and Punisher. Punisher's fucking fantastic. Um, so is Daredevil. Daredevil's no, fucking did, did, did the Punisher finish his story arc, or did it get canceled? No, it finished his story arc because okay. it knew it was going to get okay. canceled. Because they knew they were ending them all so they can send them over to MCU. Okay, they're shipping over, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's, I mean, when they started them, MCU wasn't MCU. I you want to I want to mention we finally finished Loki a couple weeks ago. It took us a while. And uh, now I've been told I should watch What If. What If and Hawkeye. Hawkeye is only six episodes. Have you watched this song yet? Have you watched all of Hawkeye yet? Yeah, yeah, the last episode came out this morning. And, oh, so how is it? Oh, dude, fucking, it's right about five and a half hours altogether. Okay. okay. And amazing. A okay. great story of Hawkeye and backstory. And it also makes the Netflix universe about more about the MCU okay. because it adds more people into it from the, the, the Netflix MCU. Okay, so so I'll, I'll, I was really happy about Charlie Cox, Daredevil, and I was really happy about that. But to answer your original question, I knew Andrew Garfield was going to be in it no matter what. Well, yeah, I knew. I mean, I got the uh, from the Spider Verse thing, the from the animated films. If you saw that, mm-hmm. you saw this coming. But uh, yeah, so I, I, but then again, you know, with the Toby Maguire, going, yeah, we'll have to watch the movie. See if I'm in it. Well, yeah, fucking, of course you are. <laughs> you had this press junket. You're gonna talk. You're gonna be like, I don't know if I'm in it. So uh, I knew they were gonna be in it. Um, I didn't know how they'd show up into it, but it was pretty obvious whenever, you know. Uh, oh, so here's the, here's the problem I have with this movie. The problem I have with it is that, is that it's like Ultron where Peter Parker fucked it up himself. Like, he, he he's he's the reason this happened, right? And so that's the problem I have with Ultron. It's like, yeah, and the thing is, it's actually based off of um, one of the comics. Uh, I have to go through my notes and uh, remember exactly... Um, but it, it, the whole spell being messed up happened before because uh, he tried to have um, in the comics he did he did something where it messed up one of um, Stephen uh, Stephen Strange's spell and it fucked it up and it was it didn't do what this did this 
reminds me more of a comic book where it was um, he went to Doctor Strange and said, hey, I want everybody to forget that I'm Peter Parker because it was right after Civil War when mm. he took his mask off yeah. in front of everybody in the comic. And Strange is like, no. So he went to Mimes- uh, Mim- Mimfistio and he, who's he's like the Satan character, he goes, yeah, I'll do that, but your marriage never happened. <laughs> oh my god yeah and so it's this big fucked up story in it and stuff like that but man um you're right and the thing is this is the thing about spider-man all right this is this is the bottom line about spider-man nothing good ever happens to spider-man a spider-man comic never ends on a happy note is it because Spider Man's um, human, kind of? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's the fact that even though he beats that bad guy, he beats the bad guy. The bad guy is always defeated. Still, at the end, he lost something that takes away a little bit of his humanity. Well, but the problem is that the things that took away his humanity. Uh, so here's the problem I have. This is a scene where basically a fucking apartment building is destroyed, right? And right, right, right. that probably killed several people, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's Marvel, they don't care. They, there's nobody in Marvel that says I'm not going to let people die, but, except for Spider-Man, which was that's my problem. That's my problem. Like problem is that he makes choices that no one should ever make. Like to say these seven people, he could have said thirty people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like right away, I, it bothered me that that happened. It's something, but again. Of course, it's it's Spider Man. So he's gotta be nice. He's gotta be. He's gonna try to help everyone, but he fucked it up, man. He fucked it up. Yeah, he fucked it up. And and at a point, once you fuck it up uh, to a point, you gotta be like, okay, how many more people it gotta die before I basically go back and do what I should have done in the first place? Right. And, and so that's the problem I had with the movie itself, Spider Man's choice. But again, like you said, nothing bad ever happens to Spider Man. Maybe it's it's. It's him being altruistic. Everything bad happens to okay. Spider-Man. Okay. Everything bad happens to okay. Spider-Man. His so, life is ruined. Every so, altru- so him comes. being altruistic is an issue. But that means like he was being a good person when really he was being kind of silly, idealistic. I mean, because he's 18. Yeah, that's true. What decisions do you make when you're 18? I made some through? horrible decisions. Awful right. decisions. So did I. Really bad decisions. Yeah. All right. So I did interrupt you at the beginning, and let's go into the thing that you were you were trying to get to. Andrew Garfield, Toby Maguire, both returned to this film, and people were cheering, um, and clapping when that happened. Oh my god! It was like because uh, uh, Ned did the sling ring thing where he's like, "Give me Peter Parker." And it was Andrew Garfield. Mm-hmm. And when he came through and everybody saw the chest, and then he took that mask off. All right. Andrew Garfield and William Defoe. William Defoe. William. William. Yeah. Well, William. Defoe. William. Not, not William. Um, it's a, he spells it W I L L E M. So it's Willem. Yeah, Willem. That's what I said. <laughs> Willem Defoe um, and Andrew Garfield. So got their their chance to recuperate every fucking thing that was wrong in anything they ever did, Spider Man ever. <laughs> I mean, Defoe won. Defoe wouldn't come back unless he could do ninety percent of the stunts. Oh wow! He made it very clear in his contract that he wants to do the stunts because he feels like doing that makes you feel more of like you're the character. Okay. Because I just don't want my face put on a stunt man. Yeah. He goes, I want to do that stunt. He probably loved being Green Goblin originally. Oh, dude. And he, and let's be honest, him and Andrew, Andrew Garfield, the second half of this movie made it. Andrew Garfield got to, uh, his Spider-Man got to fix things that, you know, he was depressed about in, you know, talking about that at the beginning when he popped in, like um, saving MJ. You said when he saved her the right way yeah. so she didn't die. Not like when. You know, and like everybody, I mean, that was like, that was a tear moment, dude. If you didn't know why that was a tear moment, you didn't watch the other ones. 
you know, like that was just like he got to save the the love interest of Peter Parker. Um, number two, uh, William the Foe. On the Green phone. Goblin. Yeah. Oh my God. He was, was he the most the, he was the most menacing villain in this whole fucking thing. He just went nuts. And it was great because they like the outfit they put him in, they like ripped it apart, but because of the way they ripped it apart, made him look like the Green Goblin, and he got that and instead of you wearing that stupid mask, which was like a a mirror of yeah. Spider-Man 2 where he left the Spider-Man outfit in the yeah. dumpster and he left the mask behind that he was leaving the Green Goblin behind. But even though he made his face, you know, look like the Green Goblin without the mask and just the way he looked and acted and everything and like he killed Aunt May. Yeah. And then she said the magical words that we have never heard from Peter Parker or from anybody in the Spider-Man movie since it's been in the MCU. And that comes with great response uh, with great power comes great responsibility. The other part of that is the fact that now we've come to know that everything we were watching this whole time, all the others, Spider-Man homecoming, Spider-Man, no way home, infinity war, um, end game, Civil War, everything that Spider-Man's been in. All of this has just been his origin story. Okay, so there's way more going going on. So I felt like this movie hit the reset button on Spider-Man. Yeah, or gave it so he's now dirt poor Peter Parker in, a, in an apartment making his own Spider-Man outfits, getting rid of all the Tony Stark influence stuff. Like we got some really cool points and parts from Spider-Man. And now he's back to being the dirt poor Peter Parker in a crappy apartment in a part, you know, that probably costs three grand a month Yeah, because it's New York. <laughs> and, um, you know, we get that now. And now I want to see the next movie. I want to see dirt poor Peter Parker. I want to see street Spider-Man. I want to see him with Daredevil. I want to see him with Punisher. I want to see him on the streets. Now, what do the comic books say about what's going to be about to happen? Because this isn't the comic books, right? This sort of this sort of thing, right? This is all MCU, dude. So it's different. Yeah. So you so but, you don't you don't know where it's going to go next to you. No, no, none of us do. This is. This is all Kevin Foggy. All, all uncharted territory for for uh, all uncharted territory. He erased every connection Peter Parker has had with any superhero. That really the, hurt me, by the way. When the, when what? when everyone forgot him for real, that really hurt the fuck out of me. I was like, oh my god. Uh, yeah, that hurts a lot. Yeah, but you know what doesn't hurt me? What? Tom Hardy Venom. Okay, so. We just saw no. Uh, saw the last uh, Let There Be Carnage with me. Yeah. I I don't know how this is gonna. I mean, we will, will be in the next movie. Carnage Venom. You think in the next movie? I, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. There's no <laughs> talks about it because we got the end. Of, so well, I was actually thinking before that mid credit scene. I'm like, so what did oh. they do? What is, I'm like, are Tom and Hardy going to show the next one? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. You know. But now you sort of see the timeline of when that was the carnage thing was happening. It happened, you know, like, you know, you see, like, it was so weird how, I mean, it's really cool how they connected the two together. I don't like the Venom movies, so I'm just, mm, you know, but, but, yeah. but yeah, it's cool how they connected the two together. I would love to see Tom Hardy Venom versus Tom Holland, Peter Parker. Tom versus Tom. Let's go. Okay. Um, why don't you start reading out some Easter eggs? Dude, so many. Uh, Rogers the Musical, they swing by that at one point, mm -hmm. which is from Hawkeye, the TV series as well. In fact, this movie ends right when Hawkeye the series begins. Okay, cool. I'll keep that in mind. Same fucking week. Okay. Is that insane? Yeah, it's insane. Um, 
there's tributes to Steve Rogers so many times throughout this movie and no Iron Man. If you notice, Iron Man wasn't mentioned at any point, really. No. As a for with happy and him between them, you know, about Tony Stark. But it was all about Steve Rogers. Like the the Statue of Liberty had the shield, the Rogers musical. Like it was just like Steve Rogers, Steve so Rogers. Everyone still remembers Spider Man, not Peter Parker, which is interesting. Mm hmm. Exactly. Um, the airlift tram from Spider Man 1 was when they swung by on the bridge that the goblin holds well, on to. And he's I like, a, I have a good question though. So when mm-hmm. this, when Doctor Strange did that spell where everyone forgot who Peter Parker was, does it mean any mm-hmm. trace of Peter Parker waking to like photographs, permanent records? Is that stuff gone? Yes, and the the way it would be is like it, the stuff might still be there, but if you go to look at it, it'd be like blurry. Like it'd just be like I I don't get what I'm reading. Okay. I actually, I knew you're gonna ask some shit like this, and that's why I watched like four different videos on Easter eggs okay. and and plot holes. Okay. So yeah, so basically, with Doctor Strange, if some if he set that spell in, into form for wishing, then it'd have been 100 percent like, oh hey, um, I don't remember who that guy is. Okay. Like Jonah Jameson, James uh, JJ Jameson would have realized he got big because he did some report about Spider-Man, but not Peter Parker. Parker. Why? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, The breaking news on the TV was the same breaking news on Venom's uh, TV. Interesting. During the Venom uh, Let There Be Carnage. Isn't there a, uh, uh, isn't there a uh, headline on the newspaper that uh, refers to Steve Rogers or something like that? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I didn't get to that. Okay. I, I, I have it written down somewhere. Okay, you'll get there. I don't know where it's at. You'll, you'll but get there. Yeah. Um, I survived my New York City trip was the shirt he wore yeah, in Homecoming that yeah. Iron Man came on. Um, Spider Menace, J.J. Jameson said that. It's his favorite Spider-Man and all. The half Spider-Man, half Peter Parker thing that they kept showing, mm-hmm. Yeah. that is how in comics Steve Ditko used to draw him when he had his spider sense tingling. Okay. When he was Peter Parker. Yeah. So that I thought that was kind of cool. Um, uh, arrested by the de- uh, the da- Department of Damage Control, which was Iron Man's that was supposed to clean up battles, but now it seems like they're in charge mm-hmm. of uh, the picture that they used of Happy Hogan was from Iron Man 3 when he had <laughs> long hair and Tony made fun of him the entire movie. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Cox Daredevil, we already talked about that. Uh, dummy, uh, which is the hand claw, was the only thing that Happy Hogan saved after <laughs> Tony Stark, which was the only thing Tony Stark saved after his mansion was blown up at the end of Iron Man 3 because he built it back when he was in MIT. Yeah, that's true. It's an AI program with an arm. Mm-hmm. Um, spider Bite, it's the second time that the Spider Bite has ever been mentioned in Tom Holland's universe to verify that he was bit by a biter yeah bit by a spider i'm sorry yeah it's alcohol <laughs> um, uh becky brant the girl that dated ned in uh far from home is now the news reporter for the high school directly on the scene mm-hmm. at places and also she's an intern for jameson on hit on jj jameson on his show she actually has a tiktok Oh, yeah. She does little videos like for that. Uh, Flash dyed his hair blonde like it is in the comics. Uh, Flat, his book was called Flashpoint. Yeah. Which is a thing in DC, which we'll be seeing, (laughs) which is about the Flash going back and changing history. And it fucks up everybody's life. Uh, When they're on the rooftop, there's a spray paint tag that says Ditko. Because Steve Ditko was the artist for Spider-Man for years. Quick question. Yeah. Uh, so at the end of Spider-Man, uh, No Way Home, um, both Ned and MJ were accepted at MIT. Did they just resend their application? Like, how did they get accepted? I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> that, that one is probably just because, remember, Peter got it all cleared up. And she I said know, she but, but then everyone forgot the fucking forgot who Peter was. 
Yeah, yeah. So, but that lady still said that she would go review their applications. So that happened before, like uh, everything was screwed up. After, and... It was all after because they're in the winter now and they're okay. in the summer originally. All right. Yeah, I, that's all I got, man. Right. I'm not going to try to leave it more than that. Okay. Uh, great science minds. There is a mural, and it had like Einstein, and it had like you know uh, Tesla and Edison. Also, Howard Stur- Stark was in that picture as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, if you noticed in the apartment, in Happy's apartment, um, Spider-Man or Peter Parker was trying to rebuild the Death Star that he destroyed in the first Homecoming yeah, yeah. movie. Um, did you, I said that to you. Spider-Man's Happy Birthday comics were where Peter shut up and... oh. It was a Spider-Man Happy birth- Birthday comics where he wouldn't shut up and he ruined Doctor Strange's spell. Um, Wong became the Sorcerer Supreme because of the blip. That was a thing. Yeah. Um, that was funny. I liked that because, uh, um, yeah, yeah, it's really right. funny. Yeah, very funny. Um, the Doc Ock car flying towards Spider-Man when his spider fence went off was like he did in Spider-Man 2. Yeah. When he threw it through mm-hmm. the coffee shop, yeah. same kind of scenario, and the license plate said sixty-three AM SP uh, nineteen, I think, and that was the first comic book that ever showed Doc Ock. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's people that look this shit up, man. If you notice throughout the entire film, Elfman's and Zimmerman's music was played during the entire movie. Yeah. Anytime you saw Andrew and stuff. Um, Doc Ock was not surprised by the nanotech because in Spider-Man 1, Norm, when Norman Osborn and Peter are talking, he even said, you know, I'm sort of a scientist myself. Well, yeah, I read your paper on nanotechnology. Yeah. So nanotechnology is something in his universe. Um, The inside-out suit was to look like the black and gold indestructive suit in No One Dies motto comic, which was the the where Spider-Man decided no one died. Um, Sp- uh, Sandman being good and turning bad was just like he, he was in the Avengers for a little bit, and then yeah. he became a villain again. Yeah. So that's kind of what that was like. Um, Feast was the place that Aunt May runs in the comics and the video game. So, I mean... They did that. That's where uh, the Goblin came into, or uh, Norman Osborn. Um, Doctor Strange said the line again, they die, they die, like he did in um, in Infinity War. Yeah. Uh, sometime, something of a scientist myself said the same line. Suit maker powered by an arc reactor that was from Iron Man 3. Doc Ock and May were in the kitchen kind of flirting with each other. You yeah, see that little scene? Yeah, I saw that scene. That's because Doc Ock and Aunt May actually dated in the comic books for a little bit. Get their freak on. Yeah, get their freak on. Get their freak on. Aunt May uh, said the line with great power comes great responsibility. Ned used a sling ring, which leads to believe that he is going to be a future sorcerer. Um, the multiple Spider-Men are like the comics or the 90s cartoon or, spider, or you know, Into the Spider-Verse. Mm-hmm. Um, when Nel- Ned yells at Peter and all three Peters are in the lab working together, mm-hmm. they do the meme. Oh, yeah. The. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Spider-Man meme that we've all made fun of. Back issues that Toby Maguire complained about it was funny <laughs> because uh, Toby Maguire actually fractured his back filming a movie called Sea Biscuit. Mm. And they didn't think they were going to be able to film Spider-Man two and Jake Gyllenhaal was originally going to replace him. Oh, wow. Jimmy Fox electro gets more like a comic book looking outfit. Um, let's see, Doc Ock, how are you trying to do better? Was the exact same line from Spider-Man 2. 
uh, when MJ falls, it was like the Gwen fall from the built the same building, like same building kind of structure mm-hmm. in Amazing Spider Man, and you know Garfield got to save him this time. And let's see, movie ends at Christmas where Hawkeye starts. Like I said, kind of a soft reboot. And the two things that's, if you notice, in Spider-Man's little crappy apartment that he saved was the coffee mug from MJ and Emperor Poppleteen from the Death Star. Yeah. And that's it, man. That's all the Easter eggs that, I, that we got. So many. And I'm sure there's more that you missed. So I'm sure there's more that I missed. And I, I, I can't even think of one or two, like, <laughs> off the top of my head. I'm just saying this is a fangasm. If you're a fan of Spider-Man, go see this movie. If you've seen it, go see it again. Go see it 452 times because we got to tell them that we want this and Marvel to stay together. So now we got to wait another four years for another Spider-Man movie. Because he said he was going to... you remember Tom said he was going to slow down, start a family? Do you remember that? All right, dude. We'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right. Uh you guys can wait see some more Tom Holland when he plays Nathan Drake later on this year in Uncharted, earlier on in 2020. Yeah, yeah. Also, we got to say this. The people that popped up in this movie, the way everybody went in this movie after, um, now that we're in the spoiler part, they played their fucking hearts out out in this movie. I think everybody just came there to be like, let's try to do the best movie ever. The two people that really stole this movie... Defoe and Garfield really came in there and acted their fucking asses off. Okay. Bottom line. Uh, next week we are doing Licorice Pizza and Matrix Resurrections. So uh, stick around for that. Uh, stay tuned for that. Subscribe for that. Do everything you do. Visit online with zoomstuff.net. We're on Twitter and Facebook at facebook.com. Such news on podcast. We're on Twitter at NDS Podcast. On Instagram, at MTS Podcast. We have Patreon, patreon.com, slash movies don't suck. We have Bonfire, you have bonfire.com, slash movies don't suck. So that you will find shirts and stuff with their names on it. Uh, and if you're watching us on YouTube, go and subscribe. If you're watching us on Twitch, go and subscribe. Watch the Facebook with a like and subscribe because you can do that now. And, um, visit, and if you guys want to, you know, visit podcasts or have another 200 episodes to, to listen to on this one. I'd recommend starting like episode one fifty, maybe maybe a little bit earlier. But um, I mean, like literally, uh, after episode thirty five, we get it going. Kind of, yeah. It's just yeah, it's, after thirty five. Sound quality amps up after that. After episode one ten, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, like we start sound, we kind of sound professional now. It's different. Whatever, dude. All right. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, uh, if you watch this Twitch, go and subscribe. Watch this, do it, subscribe. Watch this, we're everywhere. So, uh, yeah, just check us out. Uh, what do we do for small businesses, pal? Small business, if you have one, let us know. We'll be more than happy to help promote it, put it out there. And there are thousands of listeners, or hundreds of watchers. Let us know, and I'll be more than happy to promote your business just for you. You, your friends, your moms, your dads, your uncle, cousin, Bobby on the third side that you don't even talk <laughs> to. We'll help them all out. Um, let's hit that outro. That's another episode of Movies Don't Suck and Some Do. My name's Neil. And I'm Chris. And remember, anytime you're walking down a nightmare alley, remember to get home right away or you'll have no way home at all. Remember, have a merry, merry Christmas. That's for me and Chris right here at Movies Don't Suck and Some Do. Have a good night. Hit those sleigh bells. Ho, ho, ho.